Oh, hello. I'm Dave Whittle. Welcome to my studio here in Sydney, Australia. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made my song Hallucinations, which is out now on Housetrap. Let's go. All right, so here's the project file. Um, I'll play a little bit for those who haven't heard it. Hallucinations. So normally when I start a track, I always start with the kick. If you have a solid kick and build everything around that, it normally works out well. So this kick that I'm using for this one is from my Heaps Good sample pack. If you start with a good clean kick, you don't have to do any crazy EQing or compression or anything. This kick I've used before and I've kind of sculpted it to how I like it. So I haven't even got any compression or EQ on it. I've only got this delay, which is like a, um, that automates on and off at times. Um, yeah, and then laid with this kick, I've got a top kick. So the top kick sounds like this. And I've EQ'd everything out under uh, 360 hertz. So together, and without that click. So it's just there adding a little bit more grit and dirt to make the kick come through the mix. Uh, and then I've got a few more percussion layers. So I've got a clap next here. And on the clap, I've got a LFO tool, which I'm using as uh, like a gate to, sh to turn the clap off. So without this LFO tool, this is how it sounds. So you can hear that clap has a lot of like reverb and tail. I like to use the LFO tool so I can um, really shape the clap to how I want it. This is heaps cleaner. So you can make it like as tight as you want. Uh, then we've got some more hats. These are just some um, percussion loops. Um, here. EQ'd out all the bottom. Laid it, laid it with another loop. Uh, and then all together, the drum sounds like this. And then I've got all the drum sounds in a group. And then on here, I've got some EQs, which are, they're acting as filters. So they'll automate on and off during the build-ups and things like that. So here's a build-up and you can see I've got it automating up. And then for the drops, I always turn these EQs off because I find if it's on, the EQs kind of affecting the kick still with these low end. So I always turn it off to make sure I've got a clean signal. Um, yeah, so that's the drums. Then we've got the, I've got Ozone 8, which is um, like spreading the highs just a bit using the stereo imager of Ozone. Um, Fab Field of Satin, which I'm just dirtying up the top end a little bit. So without it, without it, and then with it. So I was just bringing out those hats and dirtying them up a bit. And then I've got a limit up, see if this is doing anything. So the limit is just there to catch the peak. So the clap's hitting a bit loud. So you can see the limit is pushing it down a bit. And that's just gluing the drums together. So that's the drums. The next thing, which is where the track started from, was this really cool bass line melody. Here's the MIDI for this. F minor. And the patch is um, Serum Patch. From Evolution of Sound, uh, and the bass patch is called Sweat It. Really cool pack. And then with the drums. So that's really tight. So on the bass, I've got uh, Utility. So the bass is actually 100% mono. Normally I just do the low ends, but this, this time I've done the whole bass in mono, I think. 
I think because it was so subby. Um, the EQ, I'm just notching out around 44 hertz. That's, I think that's because that's where the kick's hitting, so I'm just notching out where the kick sits. Uh, then I've got to, that's off, I'll delete that. Then I've got a glue compressor, which is like making the bass line all one unified volume, so that's, that's there. And then I've got a limiter, which is doing the same thing, so it's really just gluing this all to one unified volume. And then after all that, I've got LFO tool, which is doing the side chaining. I like using LFO tool because I can really get in and sculpt the sound to how exactly how I want it. So the next sound you hear is this real trippy lead that kind of like builds and progresses as the track goes on and gets more chaotic and hectic as it goes. So here, here it's quite short and then towards the end it's like... And this lead was actually created on the Moog subsequent 37. So I just bought this and I was kind of like jamming along and created this track. So it was kind of like an experimentation for me with this beast. So I didn't really know how to use it yet. And this track was kind of me learning how to use it. So basically what I did was I took the MIDI from the bass line, sent it to here and just messed around for like 10 minutes or something or even longer and I recorded all that audio and then chopped up the bits I wanted and then aligned it in all the places I wanted it. So you can see here I've got the whole recording. This is the original recording here. So you can see that bit shortens. That's cool. Another bit. Alright, so to set up the Moog with Ableton Live, it's pretty easy. Basically, you need to go to External Instrument. You drag that in, so it'll make a new MIDI channel. I'm going to send the MIDI to uh, the Moog Sub 37, which I've set up. And that's on channel 9, which I've already pre-set up. Audio is going to be from 5, which I've labelled here. Now I'm going to get the MIDI from the bass line, which is here. Drag that onto the channel. So now it basically just works like any other plugin, but now it's sending the MIDI to here and then back and then the audio comes back. So I can throw that up an octave. And then basically what I did was I just uh, dragged this out over the length of the track, made a new channel, audio in from the Moog, Moog, whatever. And then I recorded. I basically did that for like 10 minutes or something as the track was playing underneath and I was just kind of like having fun with it, wasn't worrying about how it was sounding. I was just keeping it looping and pretending like build-ups and troughs and stuff like that and then once I recorded everything, I went through the long audio here. And then I just like rearranged it into into where it could fit, so here's like a build up. So 
you can see it's like all different channel. I've put it on different channels here, but it was all from the one recording from the Moog, so... So that's like the finale, that's like the big climax here. So that's like the tough bit that I found, the big build up here. And then I've got effects on here. So I'm using like, because the Moogs are mono synth, so it only puts out one output. So that means like the sound will be 100% um, like mono in the speakers. So to give it some width, I use the Serum effects plugin. So it's just using the effects side of Serum. So I'm using the hyper dimension, which is adding width to the sound. I also like the compressor in here sometimes. So I'm using that on the sound as well. Um, so I've got that on the other channel as well, boosting the highs a bit. And then I've got those all going into a group. Some more effects, which are just getting automated. The Hala Reverb, bit of space. Ozone, which is probably widening it more. Yep, widening it. Um, blue compressor, which is slamming it all together, so it's all one volume. And then LFO tool again, doing a little bit of side chaining. And then with everything, this is how it sounds. Um, we've got this cool sound in Serum, which is like. This. Here's a patch from Evolution of Sound again, LD Vocal Stab. Uh, a bit of EQ, reverb, EQ again. Uh, now we'll look at the vocal sample, which is the vocal. I wanted something that was kind of like, because the track's so trippy and hypnotic and kind of like, you know, puts you in a trance when you're listening to it. So I wanted something that references that kind of thing. So I just found this really cool sample, which this is how it originally sounded. Remember it's hallucinations and I'm your obsession. Remember it's hallucinations and I'm your obsession. So I didn't want all that other stuff. I just wanted the hallucinations bit. So I chopped it like this. Hallucinations. And it was, it was too high, so I... I wanted it pitched down, but then I wanted to make sure it was in key. So basically what I do normally is I put a spectrum on it and you can, because my ears aren't trained that well for like hearing if it's on the right pitch, I use the, spectr um, the spectrum analyzer and you can see which notes it's hitting. So he, you can see here it's on D and the track's in, in F. So t let's go down two more, seven minus seven. So you can see now it's hitting on F there, C, and F. So then all together. Boom. So that's basically the track. Let's go to the master channel. I haven't got much on here. I've got bass class easy washout on the build-ups, which is basically like... Uh, filter, delay, echo, reverb, heaps of things in one, so... Really cool little useful plugin. You can get it for free, so just Google him. Bass clef, easy washout. It's so sick. A uh, tiny bit of OTT. I just like adding some because it kind of just adds a bit of... It like just adds some presence to it. Reverb, which is doing nothing. And then the, I've got the utility, which is bringing down the, the whole master before it gets sent to the limiter uh, on the build-ups. You can see it's kind of coming down quite a bit. This is quite a bit. Normally I don't go this much, but it must have, the track must have been getting really loud for the build-ups.
Because there's nothing worse than having like this loud build up and then it hits and it's like the, dr the volume drops. So you got to make sure you have like, yeah, to make sure like when it hits, it's like impactful. You got to have the break, the build up, like coming down in volume a bit. So then there's limit us not doing anything. I get all my tracks professionally mastered. So the reason is like, if I was to master it myself, I'd never finish the tracks. I'll just keep revising and revising, hearing things that I want to fix. So this way I bounce out the track, send it to mastering, and then I'm done with it. And then if I need any changes, it costs money. So it like makes it harder. So yeah, that's one thing in like I find that I really need to do is have someone else master it and they finish it. And then I trust that it's, it's in good hands and it's, it's ready for release. So that's it. Hallucinations out now on House Trap. Hope you guys learned something and hopefully see you again soon.